Welcome to Lincoln Baptist Online. Whether you're new to us or a church family member, we're so glad that you could join us and draw close to Jesus in praise and worship. Now the Bible tells us in Hebrews 10.23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Friends, today we hold fast to Jesus in the gospel because he is faithful and he will keep his promises. Now, having interviewed Saul Fenn from 20 Schemes Music this week, we've put together our worship service using the 20 Schemes Music. Some may be new to you, others might be old favourites from our online church season, but we pray that in all of them, they'll make much of Jesus and draw you close to him today. Later in the service, we'll be watching a video from the Bible Project, encouraging the act of public Bible reading and the wonder that is faith by hearing the word of God. So with that in mind, I would like to start our service by reading a passage of God's Word. We're going to be reading from 1 John 1, so you might want to have your Bibles open and follow along, or you might just simply want to listen along and have that wonder of faith by hearing the Word of God. And so we start our service with 1 John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the Word of life, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Be blessed today as we worship the light of the world. Just 
Welcome to another Games Kids Talk. Now this is a game I used to like playing with my mum when I was younger. And if you've played this game before, you're already trying to memorise all the things on the tray, aren't you? But if you haven't played this game before, let me explain. You have a good look at this tray, you see all these things, you try and remember them inside your head, like some shaky eggs, or a mobile phone, or some toys, and then you cover it up. Are you ready? Have one last peek. Okay. What can you remember that was on the tray? You can shout it out now. I can remember there was a cup. Have you said the cup? I can remember there was a pen. Those shaky eggs, we all remember those, didn't we? Can you think of some others? Good job. I'm gonna show you the tray again and then see what did you forget? 
have a little look. Did you remember everything? Did you remember these coins up here? How about this little teaspoon? Did you remember that one? Why are we playing this game this morning? I'm going to read a verse in the Bible that made me think of this game. This is from Romans 12 and it's six to eight. We all have different gifts. Each gift came because of the grace that God gave us. If one has the gift of prophecy, he should use that gift with the faith he has. If one has the gift of serving, he should serve. If one has the gift of teaching, he should teach. If one has the gift of encouraging others, he should encourage. If one has the gift of giving to others, he should give freely. If one has the gift of being a leader, he should try hard when he leads. If one has the gift of showing kindness to others, that person should do so with joy. So now what do all these things on my tray have in common? Well, a pen and a card can be used to send something encouraging to someone, can't they? You can send a little note to encourage somebody. Well, you could do that with a phone these days, couldn't you? You could phone somebody to encourage them. Do you like phoning your granny or granddad or uncles or aunties or cousins and having a chat with them? Or it could be serving other people, like this teacup and spoon. Or you could be doing something with music, or you could be teaching or leading. But what does it say in these verses? It doesn't just say, do these things, does it? It tells us how we should be doing them. It says, give freely, try hard, do it with joy. So let's think again about those things that we do. When your mum says to you, can you lay the table for me? Do you do it with joy or do you do it with a bit of moaning? When somebody says, would you mind writing a birthday card for your granny? Do you do it with joy? Or do you just go, mom, I'm trying to play this game. Or how about when you're doing music in church? Do you get enjoy it and you love it and you do it the best you can? Or not always. So let's think this week, all the gifts that God has given us and all the things that we can be doing. Do we do it with joy? Do we do it really hard work? Or do we do it with a bit of moaning? Let's pray about that now. Thank you, God, that we can play games together and that we can do things that we enjoy and have fun. Please help us this week as we are asked to serve, as we are asked to encourage, as we are asked to lead, as we are asked to teach, that we do it with joy and that we do it hard working for you. And we thank you, Lord, for all these gifts that you have given us. Amen. Remember today, we're going to do our song again after the kids talk. I'm looking forward to seeing how fast you can manage those actions. And we're going to do skip again at three o'clock. Hello, my name is Elena and welcome to my living room. We're going to sing a song together and it's called One, Two, Three, Four, Five, Jesus Christ is Now Alive. I think that you'll know the tune, so you should be able to sing along, but it would be good if you could do some actions as well. Now, I can't really do actions and play guitar at the same time. Hmm, what can we do about this? That's better. So follow me for the singing and follow me for the actions. Great, let's go. Faster? 
I was reading the Bible, which, you know, is kind of hard to do, but I came across this verse that says, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and teaching. Yeah, this is in Paul's letter to Timothy, who's a young pastor, and he's telling him about ways that he can keep his church community engaged with scripture. Okay, so preaching the Bible, I get. Teaching from the Bible, I get that too. But what about this reading scripture together thing? Is that something I'm supposed to care about? Why did Paul think it was so important? Oh man, for Paul, this was a really significant practice for the people of God. Think all the way back to Mount Sinai, where the Israelites were just rescued from Egypt. They're no longer slaves and they need a new identity, a new story to live by. And so Moses, he gathers the people together and he reads the scriptures aloud. He reminds them of where they came from, who they are, and the new future that they're called to live for. This was the first public reading of scripture in the Bible. Yeah, and it didn't stop there. When the people finally got into the land, they did it again. Joshua pulled the people together and they all listened to the scriptures read aloud so they could remember where they came from and how they could keep living as a part of this new story. So this is something they did all the time then? Well, actually, no. After Joshua died, we don't have any more stories of the people coming together to hear God's word. Instead, the people forgot their story and a whole generation arose that didn't know their God or what God had done for them. But then, centuries later, a king named Josiah rediscovered the scriptures and he was so excited that he called Israel to begin this practice once again. It sparked a renewal movement. That is, until the people forgot once more and they ended up in exile. And so this is why when Ezra and Nehemiah came back from the exile, they needed to remind the people who they are and how they are to live. So this is a powerful practice. Yeah, in fact, reading scripture together became a core part of Jewish life. It was done every week as they gathered in synagogue. Jesus himself participated in this practice. He even launched his mission during the weekly reading of the scriptures. He read from the scroll of Isaiah and then he told everyone these words were about him. And that brings us all the way back to the early church where Paul told Timothy to keep this practice going to immerse the whole community in the story of the scriptures. Okay, but here's the thing. Most people back then didn't know how to read, so they had to do it publicly. But I can read the Bible by myself. Yeah, and you should totally do that. But don't underestimate the power of this ancient practice. Reading the Bible by yourself can be hard. It can be easy to get distracted. But something happens when you hear God's word read aloud and when you're with other people. And besides, it's really easy. You don't need anyone to preach or teach. You just need to listen to the scriptures and then talk about what you've heard. This is what God's people have always done when they enter into new and uncertain times. They remember their story and who they are through the public reading of the scriptures. On the final day, when the trumpet sounds and the Son of Man returns, every eye shall see, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Some will shout with joy. Some will fall in fear, all will bow before the throne. All the saints of old will be raised to life, God's people welcome home.
in the book of life I will say my grace alone time is running out I will save in Christ to send before the throne so I'll stand together sing this chorus For only he is worthy worthy Holy God. 